Hello there everybody, it's the Game Maker here, and welcome back to Holy Craft is I think what I'm gonna call it. So this should be episode six. And uh, I just it's the it's the middle of the day here in the Poly realm. And I'm sprinting around in circles in my base like like I should. So well, I do have some plans today, and I got a few things to go over what's happened in between. So first things first, I, as you know, I've been going to the Nether uh, back and forth quite a bit now to try and uh, get some stuff. And I actually found a second Nether fortress from the one that we were originally in, where I was able to find Nether wart, which is really good because we didn't have any of that. So currently, I own every last bit of Nether wart in the world at the moment. So. Maybe I'll take advantage of that and make it so people have to pay for the nether wart. <laughs> I'll just have to see um, when we get there. So, and then another thing is that also in the fort, in the nether fortress, as you can see, our special stuff chest is getting really full. I was able to kill a magma cube and get magma cream. Um, we have, we lack slimes right now on the server too, so a slime farm would be something I want to get going. Um, saddles. As I was able to pick up four saddles, uh, some glowstone. I was able to kill some endermen and get some ender pearls. So, and then I was able to get some a lot of a lot more horse armor, so I can be uh, selling those out to all of the pulleys when they're able to get on. So, uh, the plans made mostly for days because contraptions recently haven't been working. I want to try and stay away from trying to make any sort of mob farm, mostly because I don't think it's going to work uh, because of experiences with our other farms so what we're gonna do now is actually I gotta chop down all of these trees right here and then start actually working on the <laughs> piece of the base that goes up here and which like I said is the plan is that we make a giant tree in the middle that goes up pretty pretty high and then um, right next to the tree so if this is gonna be the tree right here somewhere around over here there's going to be a second tree which we're going to make and then what we're going to do is that um, with that second tree um, it's going to have a sort of slime block launcher mechanism which I'm actually going to go to a test world and show you guys in just a second because that's going to launch us up and over into back into the big tree but in an upper part where our room is actually going to be or my room is going to be I say our room a lot or like um, our stuff where we're going to do this it's kind of uh, just to have it really so it launches up into my room and which is going to be the spot where we store all of the valuable ores and things like that so um, for right now I'm just going to get working on this tree thing and I will get back to you and then actually no wait we're going to go over to the test world I completely forgot about that and take a look at the slime block mechanism which I created um, to get us up there so let's hop over onto that. As you can see, this is my uh, 1.8 testing world. I've, this was as soon as 1.8 came out, I decided to put all these different blocks down, try different things with the slime blocks, like this weird thing. I don't know why I made it, but it changes the color. Probably unnecessarily resource heavy, but hey. Um, I've also made a few things like this, where it launches us up, launches us up, get some stuff. So these might be contraptions we'll be using in the future. And then there's this cool Ender Pearl launcher, which I'm pretty sure I'm, I bet you've seen before. And if you haven't, uh, just Google it. This is not my design. Uh, but something that is my design is this over here. Is this slime block launcher mechanism. As you can see, what it does is that I put myself on here, push this button, and then we get stuck by the other one. So I got to scoot out just a little bit. Push this button, and it will launch us onto this pad right here. So... As you can see, this is kind of this is a lot higher up and really far away actually from um, where we originally were. So I kind of like that design. I'm gonna go over a little bit how it works. So we have this uh, button over here. There's redstone underneath this furnace right here, where it will push. Um, maybe I can set that a little bit later. I think it'll miss us. Nope, we're good. And then uh, what'll happen is that. It powers this redstone, which powers all of this zigzaggy style with all these half slabs. That works because they're non-solid blocks, but it just kind of goes up. And then it basically plugs into this piston. So all of the timing is in this one repeater right here, which is kind of nice. So then we can just go, 
and launch onto our platform like this. So this will be technically the tree, the big tree on our base. And then this will be where our room is going to be. So, And then this is going to be hidden inside of um, another tree. Like this is technically going to be a smaller tree, which this is all going to be hidden in. And like this is going to be the leaves up here. So you'd walk up to a tree and then launch yourself into a bigger tree, if that makes any sense. So let's uh, go back onto the pulley server and start getting this big tree built. I want to try and really finish my base in the next few days so we can have that going for us. So um, I will get to you guys again once I've finished probably a good portion of the, of the tree. Okay, so it has been quite a long time um, since the last little bit. And um, <clears throat> I basically I've just been working on the main part of the base, and I've actually finished. So I'm just going to turn around and reveal what the top of the base is actually supposed to look like. And well, bam It's a big tree. That's right. I had to make this tree from scratch, and it doesn't look super fantastic, but it looks pretty good, I'd say. And now it's got, so as you can see, we have our treasure chest all scattered about. That's because um, next I've got to start building my storage units. Before I do that, i got to do some measurements, of course, um, to try and figure out how I want to do it. But, and then, blah, 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 blah. Right. So, if I show you in here, we have this nice little room. I'm going to try and put some more detail into the walls uh, because they're a, little, they're a little bland and, rep and repetitive right now, so... I'm going to try and do something with those. Not quite sure what yet, though. I'm not the best decorator, of course, so... Um, I'm, like I said, I'm a redstone guy. So decorating is hard for me, and I really have to use my brain to try and figure out something that looks good. So, uh, But yes, that's how this room looks. And uh, it's a lot better now, because then as we go this way, and we fall down the, down the, the chute here, uh, we'll be facing the door right out the way, so... Um, that's a lot more convenient because before I'd get lost in the glass and like have to spin around and it's pretty bad so um, now I have this slime block launcher as you can see I push this button and it flings us up here into this little platform which then we go up here climb this ladder and then we see that we have this wonderful little room in here uh, that this is actually my room so that's really cool so we, I was able to put in the slime block launcher and uh, so this is how our room looks. We have windows that go in like this. And um, so we can kind of see outside. See this way, that's where the rest of the um, holies live. And then we also keep our valuable stuff like our uh, diamond armor, which I've enchanted the chest plate and got protection for. So that's really helpful. Um, and as I get more levels, as you can see, I'm level 27 down there. Um, that I'm going to just keep in trying to enchant this armor up. And then also we can see that I have the Fortune 3 pickaxe in this treasure chest. I have all of our diamonds in this one, which we've actually gotten a lot. Because of this Fortune 3 pickaxe, we mine diamonds, and then we're able to get a lot out of it. So uh, that's pretty good. And here I have golden apples, and I'm going to put god apples in here too. And as for the rest of these chests, I'm not really quite sure what, uh, but we'll figure it out later on. So, um, and then above us, we have our enchanting table. Now, I have a bit of a different design here where it has the three all around, the one in each of these on top of each of these, and then the anvil is right there. I'm not sure if this design has been done before um, because I don't remember ever seeing it, and then we have our enchanting table right there, of course, but it was something I kind of came up with because I needed 15 bookshelves to get to level 30, which I believe we have. Yep. Fortune 3 on an iron axe. Wait a second. What if I get, um... Hold on now. Where's all the sticks? Right, they're not in here. Oh yeah, and then also when we leave, we have this cool little fountain that I made right here that we can just kind of jump into. This is interesting. So what if I get some sticks? Sticks. Run back up here. Will it still be Fortune 3? I'm not quite sure. Oh, unfortunately, we do get hurt on the way up, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, so if I go like this, I have, craft I have crafting tables everywhere. Making myself another diamond pickaxe. Go in here and look. <gasps> it's still Fortune 3. Okay, this is good. This is really good. Means I gotta go run back down here 
grab the lappies and get um, get that fortune three pickaxe because I have a friend you know Spencer who's been on here and uh, he's the one who lives kind of over there ish in a really cool base so if we go like this and like this he's been looking he's been wanting a fortune three pickaxe very badly so um, I just go like that and like that requires level 30 fiddlesticks okay well I could just uh, hop in the nether or fight some mobs somewhere else to get that for him. So I can get that Fortune 3 for him. If it ends up being better, I'll keep it and then just give him my normal Fortune 3 pickaxe. So that's kind of cool how the enchantment table will stay the way it is until you enchant something good like that. So um, now the next part is, is that I've got to make storage units that will go on the end here and hang down. Um, if you don't remember what that looks like, we're going to go hop into the um, the test world right now where I have the prototype of this base built. And uh, we'll take a look at the storage system and how they're going to be uh, built. So just in case you forgot, this is what the storage units look like right here. They're these little ball things that hang from uh, the top of our base. Now the, the one I'm going to build isn't going to include iron bars mostly because it's pretty expensive and it makes it so we have to have a 3x3 three three hole uh, for landing in water la rather than just a 1 uh, wide. So I'm, I'm at my loss of words so I'm trying to think of words and they're not coming so so as we see here we have bridges that lead to the main base in here. Now this will be a thing that we need to make it's just going to be a little stop it's basically the powered rails aren't going to be powered at one point, and then we'll be able to power them with a button. And then we'll have the choice of the storage units to go to, so we'll be able to go into this one, as you can see, go in here. And there's going to be storage in here, or different type of things. And then also when we come out, um, all there will be the different storage spheres, is what I'm going to call them, storage spheres on each of those. And then there'll, there will be a, a curved bridge that wraps around and goes these, so we can go to each one as we need to and then when we're ready we can just hop back into our mine cart press this and go now it does put our resources kinda of far from each other as in if I have something on the top of the base and um, I need like because I keep my diamonds up there but then say I need something else like sticks like that happened in the, just the last clip where I needed sticks oh, I fell down where I need sticks, so I'd have to kind of run across my entire base to try and get to those, but that's not that big of a deal. And I think I started to build the slime block launcher, yeah. But, and this is also the prototype tree, which wasn't working too well, so. Uh, that is the plan, so I am going to get to you, and I will, uh, I think I'll just jump to where all the storage spheres are done. Because there isn't going to be in anything too interesting um, and they're about actually building them. So, to the storage spheres! And just like that, the storage spheres are done. And I've also done a little bit of improvement in the room. I don't know if these armor stands were in here before, but they're in here now with uh, various armor types. I'm still trying to decide whether I want to do armor or try and fight my way to get to chain mail. Either way, we're just going to wait on that one. And I've also put signs on all my treasure chests because I could not, for the life of me, remember where all of this stuff actually was so I had to label them all and now and then also uh, from the other polies I managed to get um, three more eye of enders so now that puts us at a total of 11 which means we can go to the end because the ender portal um, already had an eye of ender in it so this means we can put in the other 11 and go to the end basically whenever we want so uh, we're going to do that really soon, so then we can fight that Ender Dragon, and then hopefully I can maybe try making an Ender Mini XP farm instead. Um, it's because we really are lacking EXP on the server, but I've been able to enchant some stuff, so... Um, now, as you can see, I have put these arches in. That's mostly to make it more symmetrical with our slime block launcher. Now, I will put, on the other ones, I will put half slabs in, but instead I will push them in one block uh, to the left here. So they'll be more inside uh, for things like that. So let's see. 
So now I think the only thing left to do is to actually go down to the storage units. And for now, the drop in there, in here, is water. As you can see, it's one of it's the spheres, like I, uh, it's the sphere, like I uh, showed you guys just before. And we go down in here. Ah, oh, and as you can see, there's a lot of treasure chests inside this one. This is because this is the main storage sphere. So. Um, I've got tools, weapons, armor, food, all the labeled ones actually have stuff in it. All, I have a bunch of empty ones for stuff that's going to come later on. Or maybe just to have, make it more even. If it comes down to it and I may be able to squish it together, I could probably take out the top row of treasure chests and uh, move it around. So it's just these bottom two rows. But then I'd have to try and decorate up the rest of this. Um, I've tried to decorate it up a little bit with these half slabs, which I use quite a bit. But I think they look really nice. So... Uh, but then I've got all these things like cobblestone, granite andesite, and diorite, which I actually need a lot more of because these things, this one sphere took out like <laughs> 10 bundles of diorite all in itself. So I'm going to need a lot more of that, which I'm a little disappointed about because to be honest, I thought I was done mining diorite, but nope. <sighs> nope. So got things like nature. I, I had a surprisingly large amount of glass, so I had to put them all in a... Uh, their own separate treasure chests and over here I've got mining things even though nether ward isn't mining one of the other spheres is gonna have uh, a bunch of brewing uh, things for potions and such like that and we'll keep a lot of ingredients in there so we're gonna have put that in there once the other sphere is done um, in here we have redstone which I actually had to convert most of it into redstone blocks just so I can carry it all in one in one go. Up here I have raw ores because I will be mining in <clears throat> um, silk touch so this would just be the place where I'd put all my raw ores until I'm ready to mine them or cook them because one of the other spheres will also have an automatic uh, furnace array like kind of like a bigger version and more automated uh, version of what we have on our base right now just cooking some of the stuff um, and then let's see, and then we got wood, things like that, saplings, other stuff, and then just random items, which actually isn't too full yet. Um, we have nothing here. Then we have nether stuff, which it doesn't seem like very much right now, but once we actually start doing work on the nether fortresses we have, this will fill up really fast. Um, and then mob drops, I have things like slime balls, uh, wool, just because I didn't really know where to put it, things like that. Yes. I'm actually surprised that our slime block launcher works. The only problem with these spheres now is that I come in over here. As you can see, we actually have a really nice view of things. My render distance was higher, which I could technically make it, but um, if it was higher, we'd be able to see um, way further that way. The only problem is now is that I need some sort of room area right here, which the minecart can stop. We can get out and then be able to go down or up or things like that it's still a little confusing on how I want to try and do that so and now I think what we're gonna do is try and make our way down because we don't actually have access into there yet we have to run down this things our thing ourselves which is so difficult actually what happens most of the time is that once I'm when I'm trying to get up into my base I end up running up the rails and then I'm like, wait, why am I doing this? I have a minecart for a reason. So we'll just give this a quick run. We'll run out here real fast. And then we'll turn around and we see that that actually looks really good. I really like how that turned out. I was kind of guesstimating on the height, on how high it is, but that actually worked out very well. Uh, the water is definitely not permanent because that's a way slow way down. And <laughs> it's more uh, getting a little too close to death than I'd like it to and as you can see up there I've died eight times already and I'd really have liked that to be zero but I think all of my deaths yes all of my deaths that are counted here uh, were falling off of high things I fell down my base about three times fell down the EXP farm in the nether about four times and then I fell off that mountain over there <laughs> I was trying to jump into a river nearby and I died doing that. So I think those are my eight deaths. Um, and then I think that's about it as far as for now. The only thing to do now is to mine a lot more diorite so I can finish up the other four spheres and fill them with stuff. 
and then also figure out uh, what I want to replace around this water so we can take that water out and make it so it's just a straight drop down so we can quickly get to our storage units and not have to dilly dally with all that water and then after that I gotta figure out the room inside here of how the whole railroad thing is gonna work and uh, things like that so I got a lot of work ahead of me and I'm not quite sure how long this episode's been running so it might just have to go into next episode um, but as for me, I'm going to get straight to work. Also, I forgot to mention that our awesome Redstone Ambassador actually got uh, someone to tell me about something they need. I actually put a bunch of book and quills in here too. So this was from uh, Jacob, which is Trooper Frog, Slime Block. Now, I've read this before, and the project is actually already done. I just forgot to completely forgot to tell you guys. So I need a slime elevator to my second floor. Just a slime block where if you jump on it, it boosts you to the second floor of my house. Thanks, mate, Trooper Frog. So we are going to run over to his his base right now um, along that awesome bridge. And I'm actually going to show you that, guys. That I completely forgot <laughs> to tell you because I just kind of he just kind of dropped it off and then I ran over, made the elevator, and that was it. So. Now um, we're going to head over there right now and then take a look at it. It's always a bit of a long journey over here, I got to say. He has actually organized his house a lot since the last time I was over here. I'm not too over to here. I'm not over here too often as it is kind of far away. Uh, but he seems to be doing well as far as food. He's got a lot of redstone which I might have to abuse. Just make just like tell him that I'll do a bunch of stuff for him for redstone. I want basically I want to like run everybody like stone dry of their redstone and I want to own all of it. So after I've got a good amount of resources I'm going to do what I can to try and get it. So anywho, here's a slime block elevator now. He hasn't done anything as far as making like a little room around this. So it's a little raw at the moment. Basically you walk on, boost you up and you land on this thing right here. And I didn't know this but he actually has a full enchanting uh, station with an anvil. Um, something I didn't even know. He has his bed up here. It's kind of a really cool area. He's making some good use of the dark wood, trading off those planks and those uh, logs and stuff like that. But yeah, not too many people have a full enchanting station. If that, in fact, that would mean me, Cameron, and him are the only ones with full enchanting stations. Um, our good friend Spencer, who actually lives way up there, who's making a huge massive castle of a base that we'll have to go look at another episode. He's got like half one. It can get up to level 22, so that's interesting because he, he started about a day late on the server. So it's kind of cool that he has an enchanting uh, station up already, so that's really good. And then when we're done, he's actually going to make another way down, but for now it's just like jump on the slime block, press shift, and then run off. And then it goes off again, and then it works. So pretty good, pretty good. Um, I don't know if I decided I was going to get paid for that or not, because it was his resources and things like that, but, well, I will decide all that later into the future, but as for right now, we're really working hardcore on that base, and I'm going to go over there and, uh, get mining that diorite so I can get the spears to be, and, to be honest, I think my mines are all out of it. diorite, so I gotta go sneak into everybody else's and steal some. So, I think that you guys will be able to cut straight to when the next sphere is done, which should be the automatic furnace room. Alright, so it has been quite a while since the last little clip, and I have worked on the third sphere now, the third storage sphere. Um, I'm trying to finish the fourth, and... It's kind of been a long process, mostly because I haven't been able to record in a little while. So I've just kind of been running around my base, just kind of waiting, waiting to build that four spear. Because I wanted to do a little update uh, as I finish the the third one, just so you can kind of see what's what it's looking like so far. So if I turn around right here, well, bam! That's what it looks like. We got this third spear right in the front here. It looks a little odd from this angle, to be honest. I'll get to a better one. Uh, but it looks really nice, and, I like, and these bridges across turn out really good. They're not quite proportional on each side, however, and there's a witch up there. Go away. And, um, and I know that if I come way over here, 
Then it looks a lot better because then it kind of offsets it. You can see this middle column. Once again, I still have this water going through, which is actually really annoying to try and travel up to those things. Because, well, not up, but jumping down through the water is kind of slow because I can't really just jump down myself. Otherwise, I take a lot of damage or probably die. Um, I don't know, I'm not. And one thing that you may have noticed is that I am currently using the default texture pack once more. Um, that was because it's something I wanted to see if I wanted to keep on doing. Uh, because I thought it'd be cool just to keep the default. Um, I do want to start using my own texture pack though, but I thought it'd be better off if I if I finished it first. So if we take a look here, we have boop um, this little kind of floor right here where the track isn't powered, and that's just so cause these are the bridges that lead straight to our storage spheres. So I have those in and. Um, they're actually really nice because then I can just, if I just need to get, like, pull out some items, I can just rush up these things, stop, jump out, get this minecart. And actually, what I do is then, if you're stopping and uh, planning on going back down after this level, is to actually put the minecarts in here so they can be dispensed out, like you saw, and go back down to the hoppers, like there, just like our system um, right up there. So, let's see. In the first storage sphere we've seen before, uh, but yes, it is the storage system. I do have a lot of empty chests, so what I might end up doing is taking out these bottom ones and just putting them all up here. And then I want to add some more decorations. I put in some half slabs to try and um, add a little bit of that. And I'm in the water, and uh, I wanted to do some of that. But I'm, like, like I said, I'm not the best decorator, so I might have to get uh, Trooper Frogs, my, uh, the one who made the bridge over there, and also my younger brother, to help me out with uh, maybe decorating these things. So if I come into the third sphere I made... Um, it's actually a brewing, kind of just a brewing area. Now, I do plan on having a bit more chests and things in here. Probably put the nether wart all across this side as well. Now I just need to go back to the nether and get some more of this soul sand. So I can have just kind of nether wart growing all over the place. Um, and let's see here. And then in this chest, I have potions already finished. Now, I didn't actually mean these to be splash potions of fire resistance. I meant them to be just uh, extended. But I accidentally put gunpowder in at the end, so... <laughs> They made him splash potion, which I mean, that's still six seconds, that's so still nice. Because I'm, I'm going to mainly use these for going to the nether, so if I fall off stuff, I won't die. And then, also, this is just general ingredients. I have some slime ball, magma cream. Uh, I need to put some more redstone in here. Nether wart. And then these uh, are really nice, actually, because if I put hoppers above these potions, what the potions, what the hoppers will do is that if I have my three water bottles in here, and say in the hoppers I put like nether ward, magma cream, and a redstone. That's an extended fire resistance potion. And if I put them in that order, nether ward, magma cream, redstone. The redstone in the item hopper will go in first. Sit in, not the redstone. The nether ward will go in first. Uh, cook up all these potions. And then once... Um, once this disappears and goes into these potions right here, making them awkward potions, the hopper will see that there's a spot open, so it'll send the next item through, which will be the magma cream, send it through, and so on and so forth until your potion is done. So it's really nice if I just say, hey, I want three potions, stick in the ingredients, and then leave, and then be able to come back to it later. So I thought that was a pretty nice addition. Now, I did want to try and make an automatic... Uh, just like dispensal system, because if you put hoppers on the bottom, it'll actually take all the potions out. Uh, but I just got to make it control it, so there's a way to detect if maybe the hoppers are empty, it'll take out the potions. But that's not necessarily true, because then if the last item goes in, either way, I'll figure it out. And I know there's a few designs for that out there as well, so we'll see what I can do from from there. For now, it's just some hoppers laying on top of the ring stand. So if I run over here, I don't know if you have seen this or not. Like I said, it's been a while since recording, but this is uh, actually a really simple room. I'm planning on doing more with this as well. Uh, these are automatic furnaces. Uh, same basic principle. You put items in here. They'll fill up the furnaces. And then once they're done smelting, they'll come out the bottom and into this chest. So it's kind of nice. So I can just put like my bundle of iron ore and then my half a bundle of gold. Stick them in there. They'll all come out and smelt and be nice and happy for me to come back and use later. And one thing I do want to do, however, is move these down to this level instead because they're way up there. And I'm like, i got to put in items. <laughs> so, yeah, but they're up there at the moment. Right now, I just, well, for the past little while, I've just been working on building the spheres in the first, in the first place. As you can see, I have one uh, ready to start 
being constructed. I just got to get to it. I just want to do this update before I get to doing that so you can kind of see what's going on. So I am going to now construct this last sphere and then we will check that out. I'm, uh, it will actually be our uh, farming sphere. We'll put a bunch of layers of just farms that we can use. Maybe those micro automatic farms. We'll see what we can do. Um, but that's what's going to go into this one. So let's get right to it. Okay, so now I'm currently looking at the almost, almost, I'd like to say 80%, 90% finished base of where we're going to be living for the remaining of this Polycraft series. Now, if I look at it from this angle, like I said, this is like a really good angle to see it from because you kind of get everything around. And as you can see, we have this back spear, spear, sphere, because I can talk. Uh, this back sphere all finished and done. As you can see, I'm trying to whack it out of the air. And um, so, and now I'm going to go up there and take a look. Um, the next project I think to do is to make it so I can take out this water and put some sort of shaft down there. Still haven't quite decided what I want to do for that yet. Um, still not quite sure. But we'll figure it out at some time in the future. Right now, however... We're going to go up and take a look at the sphere and uh, see what I've done with it and kind of get to see the views from around that uh, that vantage point. So, and we've actually had some more activity on the server. It's been a little, oh, excuse me, a little blank for the past few days. There have been many people on and um, it's just been me, basically. And now we have uh, actually Slayer Will, as you can see up there. He's new. Um, he's also from our league videos, uh, so he's on here too. And then Andrew, he's been in a few league videos in the past, and uh, so he's on here too as Prime117, so we'll be talking to them later. Next episode, however, I'll be mostly looking around at everybody else's bases and resources and see what they've been doing. So, I've been running around this middle part for quite some time now, so I also have some signs up that you may have seen before that kind of tell me what's going on and where everything is. So our last sphere is going to deal with farming. Um, I think one thing to do is I want to put some sort of like colored wool up here by the like probably right here where the signs are, so I can like figure out what room goes to what color. So when I'm looking at it for a room like really quickly, I can just be oh pink. That's the industrial furnace as you can see. So. Um, our last sphere is farming, as you can come in and see. Um, nothing's really growing yet, but it's because I just put it in. Um, a lot of these rooms are pretty bland as far as other decorations go, which is also something I want to work on in the future. Um, but I just mostly want to get them done and functional, so then I can worry about decorating them later. And, um, I actually have to show you something completely weird. So if we run over to the storage, which is, I have to run all the way over here. The storage... We uh, run in here, and I find my farming stuff. Still getting used to where it is. I grab some seeds, grab some carrots, uh, blah, 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 grab some potatoes. Right, we grab our stuff. Uh, uh, da -da, water. And we walk out here. As we can see, we have this nice terrace. Um, I don't actually think I told you guys about this thingy over here, this stone bridge path. I've actually built, hold on. I actually built another bridge over here, getting a bit sidetracked. Um, there we go, if you can see, kind of past my fences, there we go, you see this bridge across here, I built this mostly because there really was no way across here, this river, because as you know, um, Ethan and Andrew live in that direction in a swamp, and I just uh, demolished that torch right there, we'll put that back, let's see, let's see, and uh, we run over there, but I have a horse, as you know, my golden horses we can take a look at right here. I didn't actually think we'd be able to see him, and there he is. Um, would I try and ride him over there, because it's kind of a long, it's a long journey. I mean, it's not horribly long, but you get the, you get the idea. So I want to take my horse over there, which actually I don't know a name for him. I'd really like to have a name for him. I don't know what to name him. Maybe you guys will know. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll try and think of some ideas of my own. But it, it would just take a while. And the thing I had to do before is I would have to come over here. Wow, this is just a really nice place to just look at everything below me. I'd have to come around this little path right here 
go across this little thing and now the fence is in the way but kind of stay on the side of this river right here kind of on the side here and go across and then out into where their bases are so i decided a bridge was pretty necessary so we can come bolting out of the base on our path cut across here go on that bridge and go over there Ugh, so much building has been done uh, it feels like a lot of building and if i run over here then we run and we run sort of I have this other path which leads to our village that if I actually get into a, the correct spot, I can sort of see. Uh, maybe if I get on the other side. I'm getting so sidetracked right now from the original issue I wanted to talk about. But if I come somewhere, oh, if I just run over here. And yeah, take a look at this. This is something that also I haven't talked about. So we're going to get sidetracked while we're getting sidetracked here. Um, this nether portal leads straight to the EXP farm. If I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through this, actually, just to show what's going on um, so we'll come up here this goes to the normal portal right but if we go up this ladder and up all a bunch of a ton of more ladders we'll eventually get to the exp farm so if I come back excuse me for a second okay never mind I thought I was gonna like hiccup or something or just like sneeze I don't even know what it was um, but when you come back through the portal like when you went through the portal at spawn it would bring you through the portal in the nether where we just were but if you go back through, it drops you off here. So I decided that the people, because everybody was getting really frustrated. They're like, why does the nether portal bring us just randomly right here? So as you can see, someone's put water to try and get down. Um, there are actually wood planks all around here, which I had to break to make our bridge like this. So um, apparently a lot of people have been trying to get through here. I'm sorry I didn't know it would actually do that. But I wonder how nether portals work like that. But anyway, so I built a little thing in here so people can come out of the nether fortress see, oh man, this leads right in Alex's base, which is awesome. So then they can just go in, jump down the little chute, and then uh, go on their merry way and get going. And it's getting dark. So, back to the farm, to the original thought that I was going to talk about. We'll get to that in a second. No, wait! No, wait! We're going to go back! Because I wanted to come over here to see if I can see the village. Jump! Okay, maybe out of the corner of my screen. Yes, yes, you can see the roof of a building right over there. Maybe on the top left corner of my screen. If you're looking at the top, top look at the top left. I'm going to circle it, and you can see um, the roof of one of the villages. That's what I wanted to show you. That's what I was getting sidetracked all about, that there's a village over there. And I built that little bridge over there to that. Ah! What? Ah! Oh! What? Why did this happen? Um, um, I don't have any building blocks. Hold on, gotta brag. Yay! Anyways, uh, so I can't jump, obviously. Maybe if I keep trying, I'll get there. I'm just kidding. Um, well, this is interesting. We have water down there, so that's a thing. That's a that's a thing. So. I'm guessing I'm showing this now. If I just get myself up here. Go! Swim! 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 <laughs> Please swim! Why is this so difficult? Like, I can't actually... That was weird. 1.8 logic. Aha! Got it! Okay. Uh, now I have so much food in my hotbar. I'm like, which one do I eat? But I, I figured it out. Don't worry. Um... Not yet. I'm trying to like simultaneously chat. So I built this little path. We're going to go on it now. Even though I was trying to show you something else. We're going to go on this now. That's an issue. Hey, hey, hey. I'm busy. So we come on this path. We come on this big bridge that we can see from our epic base. Look how good that looks. Look how good that looks in the night. One thing I want to do is to come up and like light all the sides up too. But then I kind of like the contrast of the light and the dark. It's kind of it's kind of nice. But I, I I want it to be like this just this white beacon of awesomeness. Yeah, I'm gonna chat to these guys because that's what I want to do. Uh, haven't found one yet. Yeah, I haven't found a spawner on my own yet. Frowny face. Because i got to talk to the other pulleys. He, this is actually the first time I've seen Will on, so I'm kind of excited. So I have this path. It's going to come around here. Um, I basically just wanted a nice, easy way. Um, here we go. And I come down here. And look, 
We're at the village. I trapped in some villagers. As you can see, I have some stone bricks just like completely covering that house over there. Um, there is like lots of monsters. I don't know what I was going to say. But this is actually going to be the site where I'm going to build the iron farm. So um, I've trapped in a bunch of villagers. So, so I thought it would be easier if I just could just make the villager spawner around here somewhere. Break all the doors in the area because that's pretty necessary. Um, and then make the iron foundry really bit somewhere around here. That's why I made the bridge. Um, and then make that so it's easy to come to the iron farm. I didn't want it to be anywhere like near spawn. I didn't want it to be because I didn't want it to be have that much risk of breaking because you know how big iron farms go. They have a high risk of just breaking and shutting down if things go wrong and um uh I'm trying to <laughs> multitasking. I don't even know what that face was. Okay. And so that's what the, our plans are over here. And now we're about to fight some mobs. Bruh! Epic arrow dodge of epicness. Well, that works. That works. Okay. No! What? What's my deal with falling off stuff? Luckily, I have my epic uh 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 feather falling four boots. So. Falling off for me is something I do often. As you can see to my nine deaths, that actually used to be eight until I suffocated in a wall because of a horse. I'll get to that later. Probably next episode, just to make it so you have to watch the next episode. <laughs> so, oh, there's the bridge. Don't even know what I'm doing. This is a particularly long and... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just spastic and weird kind of segment of the episode. Ah, no! No, I would fight you, but I'm busy. I'm busy. Shh. And so, yes. So now we're going to run back up to the base, just so I can show you what I was originally going to show you. And, um, 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 and show you something really weird that's been going on. And it's bugging me. I don't know how to fix it. It's just a weird thing that I really, I don't know how to Minecraft, apparently, so... I'm going to run up here. We're going to go to the... Oh, no. Okay. Minecart? Please. I forgot. I had forgotten that I had this up here. We're going to take that down. Okay. This whole part is just a big rush. So, storage farming. This is the most... This is like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And let me know if this has happened to you. But check this out. So, there's like this little bit of land. I hope this is wheat. Yes, this is wheat. Where I put down... I put it in here. And you look. Both the seeds just hop out. They just hop out. Look at that. They just jump out. They're like, no, I don't want to be farmed. I put this one here and it's like, fine. I don't know why I was out before. But not only that, but in the same, in the same place over here with the carrots, I place carrot and carrots and they both just jump out. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Minecraft, you're trolling me too hard. So I guess I can plant them there. It's just this one cursed spot. Because then if I come over here to the potatoes... They do the same thing. The same thing. Maybe there's something I'm doing wrong with like the water placement and the fact that there's no dirt under this. But it happened to me before when I had my farms all on the ground. If you saw before in some of the early videos where there's just like half of the crops missing all the time. That's because like they would just jump out like that. So I'm really confused and it's scaring me a little bit. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to deal with it. And uh I'll probably research stuff about that later. So, and this is actually where I'm thinking, I don't know where it's going to go. I just put it here for symmetricalness. I'm actually thinking sugarcane, but then this would require a completely different dirt design. But I wanted sugarcane. No, look! Carrot! Why? Why you do this? <laughs> Carrot? Okay. So it's going to require a different design. But this is all done and ready to go. The next part is to decorate the top a little bit and then figure out the way to replace this water in getting down to these storage units. So, now that all of that is done and said, um, thank you so much for watching this um, pretty pretty long episode here. We've got a lot done and I'm really happy that we did. The base is basically done. So, uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed the videos and subscribe because that's a nice thing to do. And, uh, I will see you guys next time.